Hey folks, good morning and welcome to this episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. Today we're going to be riding BMW's 2021 S1000RR Superbike. So let's swing a leg over this bad boy and tell you what it's like to ride. All right, folks, here it is, BMW's 2021 s 1000 rr Superbike. This is BMW Motorrad's top-of-the-line leader-class sport bike. Now, this particular model debuted for the 2009 model year, and when it came out, it blew the doors off the leader-class Superbike competition. It was not even close how far ahead this S1000RR was to other models at that time. Fast forward to today, BMW gave this motorcycle a full overhaul for the 2020 model year here in the States. New engine, new chassis, new suspension, new electronics, BMW threw the kitchen sink at this motorcycle. And look at it. This thing looks so awesome. Let's turn on the LED so you can see them. LED Insight lights. This bike reminds me a lot of the Desmo Sedici D16RR. The way the headlights are positioned there. That front uh, fairing minus that center air intake. A very aesthetically pleasing motorcycle. I like that BMW continued to use its signature shark gills right here. That is a very nice touch. Look at that works. Racing style swing arm, that upside down swing arm. This swing arm looks like a works World Superbike racing component that BMW Motorrad was using a few years ago. Look at those carbon fiber wheels, yes! This motorcycle is endowed with BMW's M package, which fits carbon fiber front and rear wheels, a lithium ion battery, and this nice M badging on the seat. Not only do these wheels look totally awesome, but my gosh, they make the motorcycle handle so agilely. You'd just be amazed at how agile this 427 pound leader class bike is. That's definitely one of the highlights of this motorcycle to me is its supreme agility. This motorcycle is outfitted in the M package, which we just talked about. It also has the select package, which is mandatory when you buy the M package. The select package adds cruise control, heated grips, and a bunch of little things that you want when you're riding your leader class superbike on the street. But enough talking about this thing. Let's swing a leg over it and tell you what it's like to ride. All right, folks, here we are at the controls of BMW's mighty 2021 S1000RR. And look, a good old-fashioned mechanical key. Thank you, BMW. I am very pleased right now. Listen to that thing. I love these S1000RRs because even though they employ a sort of conventional inline four, Conventional firing order, inline four, water cooled, 16 valve. These things have a sound and a character all their own. This is a very racy feeling engine, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's start off with the ergonomics. Now, these S1000RRs have historically always been a taller, larger, rider friendly motorcycle. If you're a taller human being, you will generally fit very well at the helm of this machine. Now, the Motorrad engineers in Germany that were behind the original S1000RR and the 2012, I'm sorry, it was 2012? Maybe it was 2013, I can't quite remember, uh, update actually were taller dudes so they of course wanted a motorcycle that they could actually fit on hence that original s1000rr was always just orientated towards larger fellas now this 2020 and 2021 model is a little bit more compact so the cockpit has been slimmed down slightly you know, I'm six foot tall and I still feel fairly comfortable at the controls. I love 
how wide the clip-on style handlebar is positioned. Other modern sport bikes have a little bit more inward uh, clip-on bend. This thing has got a real racy, more aggressive wide stance, which I like. The clip-on positioning is maybe a scant higher than the old bike, but it's not so high to make it not a racy feel. What I really like is how the ergonomics on this bike are very flat. The seat and the clip-ons almost feel like they're in line with each other. It's a very flat, neutral riding position. The rider foot pegs, they are tucked up fairly high. There are definitely other super bikes in the segment with more relaxed foot control placement, but I like the ergonomics on this motorcycle yeah they're a little bit aggressive for street use but they are not so aggressive that riding this bike on the street is out of the question now this s1000rr has the upspec m package so we have that nice embossed m seat and while that seat looks very nice it's actually kind of hard and firm it's probably one of the the weak points in the overall comfort of this motorcycle. The seat definitely wears you out a little bit faster than it would on other super bikes. But at the same time, the seat is so sparsely padded that it gives you really good rear shock feel, which isn't something you want so much on the street, but on the track that is very helpful. Now this S1000RR is powered by BMW's 999ccI4. 16 valve dual red cams. BMW overhauled this powertrain for the 2020 model year. The engine is smaller, it is lighter, and it is more powerful. Now, BMW really blew the competition out of the water with its original 20 2009 S1000RR engine and this this powertrain continues to impress with its hard hitting performance. BMW has added its its variable intake cam technology. They call it shift cam. This is technology that was debuted on the 2019 R1250 GS watch the video that we did from that motorcycle review that has a good video demonstration of how shift cam works basically what it is it's an intake camshaft with a different set of lobes so it has one set of lobes for low to mid rpm and then another set of lobes for high rpm so at 9000 rpm the intake cam actually shifts position and goes into high lobe phase. And that allows you to get good bottom end engine performance and fuel economy below 9,000 RPM. And then a good top end rush of horsepower above 9,000 RPM. BMW says that that camshaft moves in less than 10 milliseconds. You can't feel it when it actuates. It's very smooth. Now, while this bike has that feature to give the riders the best of both worlds, it has a peculiar electronic eliminator here in the United States. Now, when you're riding this bike in second or third gears, the engine has a restriction where it won't give you full power between six and 8,000 RPM. And that was done to comply with US noise and emissions requirements. So when you're giving this bike the beans, it will accelerate until 6,000 RPM. From six to eight, it pulls the power back in second and third gears. Now, for some of you that ride this motorcycle as a street bike, you may not even feel it. You know, if you short shift the engine and just lug it around town all the time and don't really get on the gas or give the beans, you can very well not even feel this this restriction but for me and more sporty riders who really want to feel the the 183 horsepower of this engine you're gonna feel it fortunately 
there is a company out of Texas, BM, BMWHP.com. They are able to unlock the programming on this motorcycle and delete this restriction. To do this, you have to send them the ECU, the ignition key, this ignition key module, and this display. You send them the four, four things, pay them $850, and they will send it to you back unlocked. That restriction is deleted, and the bike will make 20 more horsepower at the tire. Isn't that crazy? So it goes from around 183 to 203 horsepower with $850. Absolutely unbelievable. The only caveat of this is it voids your manufacturer's three year 36,000 mile warranty. So that warranty is voided, unfortunately. But it's the price you have to pay if you want your S1000RR to run like it's supposed to. A six-speed gearbox puts power back to the 200 series Michelin Power RS tire. Now, this S1000RR is fitted with Michelin's Power RS tire. I'm not a big fan of this tire. The power cups on bikes like the 890 Duke R, that is a good tire. This tire is a little bit older. It's questionable performance at best so one of the first things i would do if this bike was mine would be to ditch these power rs tires and put on a set of michelin power cups or a set of tires from bridgestone or dunlop or pirelli probably bridgestone bridgestone's doing really good things with this batlax s22 street tire i would probably fit that tire on the pricing's real competitive too now this m spec s1000rr also rolls on carbon fiber wheels carbon fiber production wheels it's the first motorcycle in the world to ever roll on production carbon fiber wheels and not only do the wheels just look totally awesome but they just make this motorcycle so maneuverable it is crazy the agility of this leader class superbike which we'll talk to talk about in a little bit now with that $3,750 M package, which includes the seat, the lithium ion battery, the carbon fiber wheels, and BMW's Ride Mode Pro, Ride Mode Pro system, which allows you to adjust the electronics and you have access to the ability to adjust the engine mode in the race configuration. Right now we have it disabled because we have our iOS powered smartphone paired to the motorcycle, which we're gonna get to in a little bit. But with the Ride Modes Pro option, you have the ability to tweak engine power, combine engine power and throttle response, you can adjust traction control, wheelie control, engine brake control, and ABS. And it gives you three maps, three maps where you can put in each setting you want. You also have the ability to adjust globally the semi-active dynamic damping control of the fork and shock. Now, dynamic damping control is part of the select package. And the select package is a mandatory package that you have to get with the M package. So if you're getting M package for $3,750, you get Ride Modes Pro, carbon fiber wheels, M seat, lithium ion battery. You also have to have the select package, which includes tire pressuring monitor system, which I love. It also includes cruise control, heated grips, and dynamic dampening control. That is $1,450. A $50 increase compared to the 2020 model year. The M package is also $50 more expensive than 
2020. This brings this motorcycle to a cost of $2,200. I'm sorry, $22,200 for this 2021 S1000RR, which is great value if you ask me. But I love the ability to tailor the dynamic of this motorcycle, the engine power, the the engine brake, the traction control. I like highest engine power on this. I like the least amount of engine brake because this bike has such excellent brakes. I love ABS on front with ABS rear disabled so I can do my slides and my endos. I also like wheelie control disabled. I can do all of that in the menu. I can also adjust the suspension and pull out all of the compression and rebound damping from the shock and turn the fork DMP setting to the lowest, which improves the ride quality. Now, this semi-active suspension on this bike, it works fairly well, but it is not as versatile feeling as other manufacturers in the class. There's a pesky tuning fork vehicle with second gen Olean semi-active suspension which just totally kicks butt and this suspension doesn't perform quite as well as that package but it still offers a great degree of adjustability of course you can't manually set the damping it's always going to be semi-active and make adjustments based on on rider control input and the dynamic of the vehicle. It would be nice if you could just lock in a setting like you can on other manufacturers, semi-active suspension packages. But for riders who just want to be able to put gas in it and go and don't want to have to mess around with, with clicker adjustments and just want the machine to do it for them, this DDC package works well for that, though it isn't the best semi-active suspension package in the class at this time. Now this motorcycle has a bi-directional electronic quick shifter that makes it easy to run through the gearbox on this bike. The MW has fitted a bi-directional electronic quick shifter since the 2015 model year. And these quick shifters are so awesome because they just allow for excellent corner entry stability with the chassis. That little delay where you have to release the clutch and blip the throttle and the, and the rear tire becomes uh, unloaded for a split second during corner entry. An electronic quick shifter completely eliminates that. And that allows this bike just to haul butt during corner entry. Speaking of corner entry, we rode this motorcycle in the canyons. We rode it at the racetrack at this motorcycle. It is insane how agile this 427 pound S1000RR M-Spec bike is. This is easily the most agile leader class superbike at this time. There is no motorcycle that can outturn this bike. It is insanely agile. I love being able to put this motorcycle exactly where I want with very little effort. We talked about the suspension. The suspension continues to be a little bit questionable even on the racetrack, but you can't knock the sheer versatility DDC offers. We're going to set cruise control. That's right, this bike has cruise control. I love cruise control. S1000RRs have had that feature for quite some time now, and it is awesome. Set it and forget it. I also like that you can enable cruise control at triple digit speeds. There are other motorcycles out there that electronically limit you and won't allow you to do that, not BMW. There's also heated grips. The heated grips work excellently on a chilly day and make riding more comfortable. Now we talked a little bit about having this now we talked a little bit about having this motorcycle paired to our IS and iOS enabled smartphone. BMW has a ride connected app. You download the app, it's free. You sign up, you pair easily your phone to the motorcycle with it powered on, and the motorcycle is paired to your phone. With the BMW Ride Connected app, you can 
service intervals. You can actually schedule a service appointment. You can check your fuel level. You can record your, your riding routes. You can see the weather where the bike is parked. You can also, and this feature is totally awesome in my opinion, is you can literally have turn-by-turn -turn navigation that you enter through the app that displays right here on this beautiful 6.5 inch color TFT display. So now you have turn-by-turn -turn directions, navigation right on the display. You don't need to have Bluetooth paired to your, you can, you can actually pair your Bluetooth enabled headset to the motorcycle and have turn-by-turn -turn directions displayed here with audio to your headset. It is unbelievable the technology that this bike brings to the table. And not only the technology it brings to the table, how easy and simple it is to use. And the best part, it's free. You just download the app and you just use it. This 6.5 inch color TV TFT display is used on all BMW Motorrad motorcycles now, except for this budget G310R and G310GS. This display is awesome. It's easy to read. It's colorful. It's very legible day or night. It's crisp. It has fast booting sequence. There's no, dis no delay when you're using the BMW multi-wheel menu function. Here is some of the menu functions here. I like, there is the navigation component. We can add the navigation either here or on our phone. How cool is that? That is so awesome. We can select a sport instrument panel setting, which gives lean angle, traction control, brake input. So this is more for the track, but it's still nice that BMW has it. We also have the my vehicle setting, which gives us all of the settings of the vehicle our range, our tire pressure, which is a little bit low in the rear. We did a track day not too long ago on this motorcycle, and I aired down the Michelin Power RSs for track duty, and I didn't air them up enough for the street use. Again, 28.3, that's not, even though it's out of OEM specification, it's still within my specification. 30.1 in the front, a tad low in the front, 32 would be a little bit better but again it's still within my specification of use for a sport bike motorcycle tire we can also look at the onboard computer see how long we've ridden how long our current mileage is our fuel mileage average we've averaged 31 miles per gallon not the best fuel mileage i'm sorry we've actually averaged 34.5 34.5 on this motorcycle still not the best but when you have 183 horsepower and you have an electronic quick shifter that loves going through the six-speed gearbox, it's easy to burn gas on this motorcycle. Very nice electronics package BMW. You guys have killed it. It's also worth mentioning that this bike has hill start control, just like Honda's Goldwing. If you are parked at an incline, the motorcycle actually actuate the rear brake so the motorcycle does not roll back when you release the clutch of this motorcycle. Now, the hill start control is a little silly to me to have on a leader class super bike, but it's still nice that BMWs are paying attention to the details and trying to make an inclusive super bike that all people can ride. Good job, Motorrad team. Brakes on this motorcycle. Brakes on, brakes on this motorcycle, triple hydraulic disc brakes with ABS, with cornering ABS function. I love the brakes on this motorcycle. They are extremely powerful. Hayes makes the four piston radio mount caliper on this bike. Nissan is the master cylinder manufacturer. And the brakes on this bike are just, they are so powerful. I love the ABS programming. There is different levels of ABS programming. So if you want rear ABS enabled, you can. If you want cornering ABS function enabled, you can. 
course, if you want a real aggressive braking package where the rear ABS is disabled and you can brake at a very, very high level before ABS starts to intervene, you can have that setting too. The rear brake also has good power, good feel. I'm a big rear brake guy. Doesn't matter if I'm riding dirt bikes or street bikes, I am on that rear brake all the time. And I love motorcycles that have good, strong, powerful rear brakes. Good job, BMW. Brakes on this bike kick butt. Now we rode this motorcycle after dark. And the LED headlamps are some of the best LED headlamps we've test tested with at night on a sport bike. They do a great job of illuminating the road ahead in a straight line. But because this motorcycle is so adept at cornering, you are going to be going through corners very quickly at night on this motorcycle and this bike does not have cornering headlamps which is strange because it has an IMU. This motorcycle has the hardware to supply positional awareness. So technically, BMW could rather easily fit cornering headlamps on this bike, but it does not have that. BMW, for the love of God, can we please have cornering headlamp technology on this vehicle? We love going fast through the corners at night on this bike, and we're at lean. It's really hard to see where we're going just because the motorcycle is pitched over so far and pitched on its nose so far that the headlamps are rather ineffective. Cornering headlamps would be a good addition, but in a straight line, these headlamps are no joke. They do a great job of illuminating the road ahead. LED brake lights and turn signals are also awesome. I love that the brake lights are integrated neatly into the turn signals. So there really is no conventional tail light mounted in the tail section. It looks so clean, so tidy, and that's an OE feature. Good job, BMW. Now cruising here at 68 miles per hour, we definitely have some engine vibration. This S1000RR powertrain has historically always been a very vibey engine. Now, while that isn't so awesome for everyday street riding, it does give the engine good character. This engine's got a lot of character. When the thing is zinging on the pipe, it just delivers all the right sounds. The view from the rear view mirrors is definitely decent, but the engine vibration does cloud the vision of the mirrors a little bit. You also feel, feel the vibration through the controls, the handle, the clip-ons, and the foot pegs. The vibration isn't too bad at this running speed, but you downshift a couple gears and you really feel it. At 8,000 RPM and above, you feel the vibes. Again, because this engine is so high performance, and so charismatic and I just love it. I'm not going to knock BMW for having a lot of vibration on this engine but there's definitely super bikes out there with less vibration. Now this motorcycle is built in Berlin, Germany and the fit and finish and attention to build quality on this bike is stupendous. This motorcycle is so well put together and even with its high level of, cra of craftsmanship, BMW affords a three-year, 36,000-mile with roadside assistance on this vehicle. Isn't that crazy? So not only is it built super Ford tough, they actually back it with an uh, automobile-like warranty. It's unbelievable. Maintenance-wise, this motorcycle is also built to last. After its initial 600 mile service, it requires engine oil and filter changes every 6,000 miles. So every 6,000 miles you drop the oil filter and the engine oil, you also replace the air filter insert at that time. At 18,000 miles, BMW says you need to inspect the 16 valve valve train. Isn't that crazy? A motorcycle, the engine that revs to 14,600 RPM makes 183 horsepower at the tire stock and can go 18,000 miles between valve adjustment interval. That is just insane to me. Good job, BMW. You guys are kicking butt. All right, folks, we have enabled our racetrack mode here at the stop sign that we just stopped at. You guys missed that. 
but now we have our racetrack mode enabled that automatically deactivates the bluetooth pairing function of the phone so now our phone is no longer paired to this device it also deletes all of the other riding mode maps it has rain road dynamic and race and now we just have race we have race pro one which is custom we have race pro two which is custom and we have race pro three which is custom i am running three this is maximum power setting least amount of engine brake the least amount of abs the softest fastest suspension response which gives us in theory the more plush action that we want in a street environment and that is the setting i like for general street riding now we've made a big deal about this on other motorcycles case in point the gist r 1000r that we reviewed a couple episodes ago now one thing that bmw is really good about is its finite adjustment of its traction control system now bmw has been doing this for a long time i, I think ever since it unveiled its hp4 for the 2013 model year they had finite traction control adjustment and what that means is right now we are riding in the lowest global traction control setting so the least traction control restriction is what this motorcycle is operating with but with this dtc button here we can actually further increase traction control incrementally it'll still be at a low level and we can also pull it back to a lower level now this setting while it's pretty silly for street if you are a racer or a very advanced track day rider you're going to want this setting this is really going to allow you to tailor in the traction control the wheel spin setting for the way you like for the way you want the rear tire to interact with the pavement this is a huge deal for advanced level riders and bmw has offered it for quite some time now good job bmw we see that you're paying attention to the details and we are too all right folks that was a very fun day of riding on the s1000 rr 2021 model year vehicle i really adore this motorcycle when i first started riding it i've always been a big bmw s1000 rr fan but that second and third gear restriction between six and eight thousand rpm has historically been a deal breaker but now i know that bmw hp out of texas will fix that problem for $850 yes it will void the warranty but I wouldn't care I would still do it just because I know this motorcycle is built so well that the chances of some kind of mechanical defect happening in this motorcycle during the first three years is is very slim in my opinion so I absolutely would buy that upgrade for this bike i just love this motorcycle it looks awesome it is built ford tough it has all the bells and whistles even though this is a competition specification machine i love how bmw has beautifully integrated high-end technology and electronics on this motorcycle to make it a good street bike yes this is a good street bike just because bmw made it that way with its adept electronics package would i spend twenty two thousand two hundred dollars on this bike you bet you i would this motorcycle brings tremendous value in the class you have to remember other manufacturers leader class super bikes premium the up spec models cost well over $22,200 well over this motorcycle this thing is made in Berlin Germany it's very high quality has tons of power all electronics $22,200 I would buy this motorcycle then I would take off the electronics get them remapped for additional 850 and have a 200 horsepower at the back tire superbike to ride on the street well, folks, that's a wrap of today's MC Commute Review. Make sure to log on to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all of my written content lives. 
Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs it down if you didn't, because we love to hear from you negative fans too, because we're inclusive. And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.